Hi, welcome back to Linux. Today we're going to look at system administration through installing WordPress. And we will be installing an old version of WordPress on an old version of Linux. So if you're working with some older hardware and you you think, oh, well, Ubuntu 1804 or something of that sort won't work. Well, hey, here's a purpose for 1804. Let's get to it. So what we'll need in this is we're going to need, well, we'll be using our normal terminal. So we'll be logging into our system through a terminal. We'll have a virtual machine with Ubuntu 18.04 server installed, which you can install you know, however you wish. And we're gonna have an IP address of, in this case, on the local network of 10.10.10.201. So let's look at that configuration as we go through the file here. The very first part is we'll pop into, whoops, wrong one. The very first part here is we're gonna pop into uh, the system and we're gonna install MySQL, Apache, and PHP. Now, that's after we configure the Etsy hosts and Etsy host name file. So let's be sure that Etsy host and Etsy host name are configured first and we'll look at that in just a moment. So I'm gonna power on my virtual machine now and Hopefully, when this machine comes online, we can get started and see the different options that are available to us. It only takes about 10 seconds for it to get online, and so I'm gonna log in now. And you can see my IP address. Already, I've got 10.10.10.201 configured. So having that configured allows me to secure shell into the box. So I'm gonna secure shell as student into that system. And so now I'm on the Linux system. Now this is just logging into the system. If you have any trouble with that, let me know. Or, you know, look up secure shell to a, a system, etc. So I've logged in, I've logged into the system and I'm gonna check cat Etsy hosts. So I'm gonna look over there and I see, ah, good, server one is there. And I'm gonna cat Etsy hosting. So right there and I see server one is there. Perfect. Well, let's go ahead and then install the applications that we're going to need for this Linux, Apache, and MySQL PHP stack. So let's go ahead and, and get, get that. I'm going to copy that over, and this will be in the description. So I'll go through and select that and press Enter, and hopefully, well, actually, let's go ahead and become root. So let's be sudo-s, which there, and now we can go through and install that as root. Now this can take about 30 seconds to a minute, depends on the speed of your system and internet connection and you know the load on the remote servers. So we may just pause just a little bit here and let this cycle through. Okay, great, it is done. So let's see what the next step is here in the directions. We're gonna go through and it says app get install, install recommends MySQL server. So we're using an old version here. So normally I'd use MariaDB. But in this case, because it's an old version, it's okay. So I'll use the old version. So I'll let that go. Now, once that's done, we can go up here. It's actually probably gonna ask us for the root password. We're not gonna enter one. We're gonna say nothing. After that comes back, we're gonna go into MySQL and we're gonna create, well, actually create the database, grant privileges, etc. So let's see how it's coming along. Okay, it's giving us a little error there. At the very bottom, it says MySQL Server 5.7. So let's see what we got there. If I hit tab, it wants to go MySQL-5.7. I'll try that. It seems that it has a complaint between 5.7 and MySQL. So I'm just going to do an app get remove dash dash purge my SQL, and let's see what we got here. I'm gonna do star on that. So I'm just gonna get rid of everything. Now by purging, I'm gonna go through and remove all the databases. We're gonna get rid of everything with MySQL on it, and we're gonna allow Ubuntu to select the new files it wants to install. So if there's a new version or something of that sort, we're gonna let it install it. So I'm gonna choose this again. This is just after running that purge command, and I'll, I'll throw that purge command into in the directions as well, just in case you need it. All 
right. So it's done. I just popped those directions in there. Let's go ahead and type MySQL. Well, did we install it again? Yes, we did. So MySQL, we're in. We're going to create a database and we're going to make it WordPress and default character set right there. Then we're going to grant privileges to a user called SQL user. So we're going to grant all privileges on WordPress dot star to SQL underscore user at localhost identified by password. Now, this right here, all the files inside of MySQL or SQL Server here, is going to be WordPress dot something. And so we just say WordPress dot star. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the SQL user from the host. Good. And then we're going to quit. So we'll just quit right there and be done. So now we've configured, well, we've created the database with a couple of options there. Uh, normally you wouldn't enter these kind of things right there, default character set, UTF-8, collate, UTF-8, Unicode. You wouldn't put that in there, but that's required by an older version of WordPress. So maybe the newer ones too, I don't know. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Now we're gonna pop over to www HTML, go to that directory, and we're gonna remove everything in here. So we're gonna get rid of everything in that directory, the index.html there. It's gone now. And we're gonna try to grab WordPress version 5, so 5021. I'm going to go download that, which, hey, it came right down. So now we're going to tar it, which is we're going to actually extract it using tar. I uh, use XVZF, the WordPress right there. Beautiful. Looks like it, it all came out without a problem. I think we have to touch uh, WordPress.ht access to make WordPress happy. And uh, then we're going to copy WordPress, and I think it's sample. Is it not sample? Well, let's see, is it WP config? WP config dash sample, that's it, to WordPress, and we'll just call this WP dash config.php. There. Now we've done that. We'll make a directory, WordPress, and we'll call it WP dash content and upgrade. And then we'll go through in chone dash r www dash data www dash data to var www html wordpress just like that so what we've done is we've copied the configuration sample over to the config we've made a directory over here and in, uh, inside of wp content so we can go through and do upgrades and then over here we've got my might just be uploads, but anyway, we've got a shown right there where we're giving permissions to the user name www-data and the group called www-data to var www-html WordPress. Okay, now we've done that. Let's go ahead and we're going to set all the permissions here inside the WordPress directory. So we're going to look for everything in WordPress, type directory, and we're going to execute chmod755 on that. That's going to allow us to get into the directory. So we're going to look for the files and make that 644. So what this does is to get into a directory, you need to have execute permissions. And so that seven is read, write, and execute. Five is read and execute. And five is read and execute. So that's user, group, and other. So over here, we've got 644, which that's read and write, and that's read and read. So we just changed permissions there. Now I'll go ahead and VI WordPress and WP dash config dot PHP. And right down here, we will see that we've got this uh, database username. And if you remember, we used SQL user and the password was actually password. Oh, convenient. Just do password, just like that. Localhost is the host. And so that's fine. And we don't need to uh, do anything with a collate right there. So we can leave that alone. So we've got that running. Now we're going to go through and we're going to uh, configure our sites enabled. That's going to be the, the vhost configuration inside of Apache 2. So let's go ahead and create that. We're going to vi etsy apache2 sites enabled vhost.com. Now, vhost.conf about the the shortest thing you can put in there is is what we're going to do so 
So we're going to pop in our virtual host saying anything. And then over here, it's going to be server 01. And for my network, the little local network here is server01.cybernews.net. And the document root is var www html wordpress. Now, if you're wondering where to get WordPress, just go over to wordpress.org right there. You go to wordpress.org to grab that. And I chose releases because I want to go through and pick one of the old versions. So I went over to the old version five. Where is that? There, there we go. Old version five here, which came out back in 2018. Yeah, 2018. And uh, was last updated in 2024. So there you go. But in any case, now that we've got all of this uh, configured, we're going to do a service Apache 2 restart. Uh, service MySQL restart. All right, great. And now we're going to go visit that system. So let's go visit that system. We're going to type up here, HTTP colon slash slash. And we'll go to server01.cybernados.net. Okay, error establishing a database connection. Right, so let's do slash install. See if we've got our install directory in there or our WP admin. This is looking good. So we're making great progress. Now we have to go over with the WordPress directions. Oops, the WordPress directions and install WordPress. Let's pop into WordPress and we're going to go through the readme file there and look at that and see what we need to do to get WordPress up and running. There's WP admin there, content, includes, etc. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So going to our web browser, we're going to go to that readme.html file there so that Server one, for me, server one, cyberdata.net, read me HTML. I'm gonna press enter and it's got, hey, first things first. Talk about WordPress, very special project. Hey, they're happy to have it part of your world. Help them out wherever you can. Now it says open WP admin, install PHP. So we click on this and it says, hey, can't select database. Did we specify the database? I don't think we did. So let's go check that out and see if we have specified the database. So let's go back over to look at our, we're in the WordPress directory, so I don't need to do that anymore. Just wp-config. And we got the database name. Oh, we don't have the database name there. So right here is where you're gonna find a lot of common problems. This is not one of them, but you'll see that the username's wrong or the password's wrong or the host is wrong. Local host is by the way, what we're using, so that's good. So keep that the same. And then WordPress is our database. So let's go right there, save that. And if you want to restart Apache, you can do that. And we could do a service, service, uh, let's see, my SQL restart as well. We can start restart both of those. Go back over here and this install, I'm going to go ahead and press enter again. And look at that. Now WordPress is is up here, it's asking me for my language. I'm gonna say yes, English. The site title, we're gonna say a demonstration site. Username, admin, password is admin. Confirm use of weak password. And I'll just say admin at cybernados.net. There we go. We'll say install WordPress. Okay, it says it's been installed. Let's see if it has. Let's go over here to admin, admin, and it sure has. WordPress is now installed. It's running on our system. And we can go through and customize the site, whatever we wanna do. Um, choose whatever kind of uh, settings you wanna choose. But this is, uh, this is one of the things that you can do on your site. So one of the very first things we should probably do is change the appearance of the site, right? If we go to the site right now, and we go over here and we look at the site, it's it's kind of hideous, right? <laughs> it doesn't look very good. 
uh, which WordPress, what we're looking for is, hey, making things easy. So let's go over and look at the appearance, which themes come up first, and we can choose one of these themes. And so I'm just going to say, uh, activate that theme. And wow, that was fast. So it activated the theme, it says. So I'm gonna refresh this page. And there we have demonstration site, just another WordPress site, and everything is operational. You have installed WordPress and it's fully functional. So you've got something that you can uh, you can use inside your small business or um, at home or just for demonstration purposes. I hope that this has helped and I look forward to talking to you next time.